Ted Lasso Season 3, Episode 10, now out and available on Apple TV for you guys to go and check out. I've just watched them and tell you guys my thoughts on it. Smash your thoughts down in the comment section below. What did you guys all think of this episode? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Smash it down there. Smash that like button. Click subscribe. And let's talk about the newest episode of Ted Lasso right now. <laughs> Okay, so episode 10 of Ted Lasso, now available. Look, I've, I've enjoyed this season quite a lot. And episode 10, just again, just absolutely brilliant. So many things that they incorporated into this episode that I absolutely love. I love the representation of the Super League in here. Now, that was a major thing that was going on in the footballing world. I still remember them trying to really push it through, all the owners getting together, trying to, you know, branch away, the big clubs branch away, create their own league so that we would all get Barcelona versus Manchester City every single week. Like, that was what, what, what they wanted. They wanted to see those type of clashes. And we all knew it was going to be bad for the leagues. It was just going to destroy football and change the landscape. It was going to really change everything when it came to football. So I love that they incorporated that. Obviously, the billionaire from the first few seasons is back, and he's the one that is heading everything. He obviously has a vendetta against Sam, as we see in this episode, because Sam wouldn't sign to go play in the Super League over in Africa. So we see him and him keeping Sam out of the Nigerian team, and everything to do with crushing Sam at any point he can. So... He is putting this Super League there. And obviously, Rupert invites Rebecca to come to it. And he's hoping to get her. I mean, to be honest, I don't know why Richmond and West Ham are at that table. Because neither of them are a part of the, the, the elite clubs in England. But hey, we move. We go on. We, we, we push on with that. So they're there. And I love Rebecca's speech. I think Rebecca's speech here is up there as one of the best speeches. Whoever wrote that knew exactly what they were doing and it it talked to every football fan out there. And I love that speech that she gives about we may own the clubs, but to take that away from everyone else that watches and loves it and lives and breathes it is just abs- it was absolutely phenomenal, man. It was just it spoke to the heart of us football fans. It really did. And even whether you're a big big uh, club lover, like you love Manchester City or you love United, Arsenal, Liverpool, Barcelona, Real Madrid, Juve, all of them, if you, even if you love all them, it still speaks to you because what makes the game so special is when we go to those little teams like a Brentford. When we go to them, when Brentford goes to City and beats City, like those are the games, those are the moments that you're taking away. Those are the moments we love. And that whole speech just absolutely spoke volumes to me. And I love that. That was just absolutely brilliant. And it's great to see Rebecca come through. Someone that has been through so much and is coming through for everyone else. She's helping Keely out. She's helped Roy out. She's helped Ted out. And now she is saving football in Ted Lasso. It's just absolutely phenomenal. She has just come leaps and bounds for her character. Absolutely fantastic. And that moment where Rupert goes in to kiss her and she steps back and she realizes he his life is messed up. Like it's it's gone. It's it's over. And I love that. I really do. And Rebecca coming to the realization, I don't need to beat Rupert anymore. I want to win, but it's not to beat him anymore. Like that it's 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 such a fantastic character arc she's gone on. But one of the most shocking things was when it opened up and Nate had left West Ham. It's over. He's not at West Ham anymore. And I thought that was absolutely shocking. I I, I did do a prediction video where I said Nate would. He would leave West Ham. He'd get sacked or something like that. But I never expected it to be this like early. I thought it was going to be later on in the season. But he's left. Now all there is to do is to link him and Ted back up and to crush this. And we see a little bit here where he goes into Richmond and he actually tidies up and he says sorry to Will. That was a touching moment. But it's the moment where we see him, Nate, in just this depression state. He's just absolutely like lost. 
and he finds his violin, he starts playing it, and his dad, Sam, watches it. And then, now we see all the stuff that Nate has been bottling up start to come out. This idea of his father putting all this pressure on him to be something, to be successful, to be what his father wanted him to be. And we see that. And we see Nate pour his heart out, and then his dad apologize and come around and just say that he, all he wanted was his son to be happy. And I, I thought that, that moment was just so emotional. It hit every single level. And I'm just sitting there, I'm like, bro, you can't hate Nate. You can't hate Nate as a character. Yes, he's done some dumb stuff. But this character arc he's going on, this redemption arc, is just absolutely phenomenal writing. And it's brilliant to see Nate start to come back around. It really is. It's fantastic. And that whole moment with him and his father was him getting it out, getting everything out. And I thought it worked so well. It was just absolutely fantastic. And then we have this beautiful moment. I never thought I would need to see Jamie and Roy become best friends, but I damn, I need more of it. I really do. Just, it's fantastic, especially when they create Uncle's Day. And I love Roy's sister says, any day that annoys Roy is a good day. And that was hilarious. And then Jamie obviously gets invited and <laughs> Roy's niece says, I have to invite your best friend and it's brilliant. And then when he Jamie gives Roy his present with the England shirt, his first original one, and they changed the E to you. That moment was hilarious. I love them two. Them two are just fantastic. And then that beautiful moment where Jamie decides to wear number 24 for England to support Sam. And I found that was absolutely fantastic. Jamie has just become one of my favorite characters. He's just absolutely fantastic. Roy has his own little character arc that he's going on as well. And he is changing. And he says sorry. And he goes up to Keely. And, you know, he mends that bridge with her. And now they're back together. They needed to be back together. They're just, they're meant to be. It's just, it was a relationship that we love. And I cannot wait to see them moving forward now. Keely has all her stuff with Jack pulling funding out of her company, her company getting closed down. She starts to go through the absolute depression state as well, where she just, she doesn't know what to do anymore and she's lost and everything like that. But obviously she's made friends with everyone that worked there, that was working for her. And obviously Barbara was one of those ones where she's created a bond with. And that snow globe when she bought it for her, I love that moment. And then obviously Rebecca you know, she, she's a freaking billionaire and she's just like, show me the money. What, like, what were they funding you? And she looks and she's like, really? And she's like, I got that in cash. And like, so she's now funding Keely and Barbara has resigned from Jack's company and she now wants to work for Keely as well. It's all coming together. Then you got Roy. It's just, everything is tying up brilliantly. Like it's just, yep. I'm starting to think that this may be the final season because they're starting to tie bows. There's only the Nate and Ted and the team. That needs to be all fixed up and everything like that. So you still have that storyline going on. But, I mean, I really don't want this show to ever end. It's just it's just absolutely fantastic. There are so many things here that I love. I love the Rojas and Van Dyme stuff. Absolutely love that. When he goes on international duty, Rojas changes, becomes the enemy, and he's just like fully focused on crushing Canada. And then when he comes back, it's just like nothing ever happened. It's, oh man, it's absolutely brilliant. But overall, I really enjoyed this episode a lot. Emotional, brilliant writing, fantastic character arcs, continuing. I just, I loved it. I really did. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What did you guys think? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Smash it down there. Smash that like button. Click subscribe. And I'll see you guys next video. Until then, stay safe and peace out.